Now let us talk about functions of two variables. Um, so a function of two variables is a device to which you uh, kind of feed an input that consists of two numbers and it spits out um, its output, which is uh, a single number, right? What is important, it assigns a unique real number to every pair of real numbers, X and Y, in the domain, right? So, so what is this domain? What is this subset of R? We're going to, to, to go through some examples to, to, to clarify this, right? Um, so the, the notation is, is just like F and then X, Y in parentheses, which reads F of X, Y, or we can just write Z equals F of X, Y. Uh, so, and then z is the function's value. Um, so the variables x and y are independent variables and z is the dependent variable. Well, um, now, usually the domain of the function is not specified, right? So, and the function is um, given by an equation. And in, in that case, the domain is just, you know, the set of all possible combinations of x and y for, for which the equation makes sense. So we are going to, to look at some examples. Um, maybe some uh, super simple example. Uh, if, if we have an electric circuit and if we know uh, the resistance and the current, then we can compute the power as a function of the resistance and the current. And the power is resistance times the current squared. Okay, um, now talking about mathematics, right? So if we fix some, some point on, on the plane, let's say, I mean, j j just to be specific, instead of uh, thinking of an arbitrary point AB, so let, let me, I don't know, just give you some example, like what if my AB is 5, negative 3, right? So this, this is my AB. Then um, for a, every other point, or maybe for every point x, y, uh, we can compute the distance from x, y to the given point. So the distance um, from x, y to the given point is a function that I denoted d of x, y and is given by the, the, this equation. So square root of, well, x minus 5 squared plus y minus negative 3 minus negative 3 is really the same thing as plus 3, right? So I'm going to, uh, to just try plus 3. Plus 3 squared okay so th this is also a function right so and of course the, the, this equation makes sense for all every pair of um, numbers x, x and y now let us look at some probably less trivial examples so uh, find and sketch the domain of this function uh, now um, domain right so domain is the set of all uh, combinations of x and y for which this equation makes sense so why wouldn't it make sense? Now, there are two operations here that uh, sometimes may fail. So one operation is the division, right? So for the division to make sense, the denominator cannot be zero, right? So x minus two, x minus two can never be zero because if x minus two is zero, then we have a division by zero and that is impossible, right? So which means that x is not 2, right? So th this is the first condition. The second condition, uh, so here we have the square root, and the square root of anything uh, only makes sense if the input of the square root is um, a non-negative number, right? So because the square root of a negative number is essentially Im an imaginary number, and if we work with imaginary numbers, then we don't have a function from real numbers to real numbers, right? So the domain of something, I mean, while we are working over real numbers, the domain of something with the square root, um, um, you know, is the, the set of um, combinations of X and Y for which the input of the square root um, is non-negative. Okay, so which means that Y minus X squared should be non-negative. Well, and maybe it is more convenient to, to rewrite it as y is bigger than or equal than uh, x squared. All right, so uh, here, and x, that doesn't equal to 2. So this is essentially the answer. So, so the domain of this function is the set of all 
uh, pairs x and y. So we can write it like this. So the set of all x and y in R2. So this uh, curly bracket means a set such that y is bigger than x squared and x is not 2. Right, so th this, this is the answer. So here is the answer in printed form. Oh, and I forgot to evaluate f of uh, 1, 2, but that, should, that, that shouldn't be very hard. So to evaluate f of 1, 2, what we do is we substitute 1 for x and 2 for y, right? So basically we take the, this formula and replace y with 2 and x with, um, with 1. And then we get this equation. Okay. Um, Next, we are going to sketch the domain of the, this function. Um, well, how can we do this? So uh, let me first sketch coordinate axis, x and y. Um, let me pick some, some other color. Now, um, so here we have two kind of conditions defining the domain of our function. So the first condition is that y is bigger than or equal than x squared. So, and this is an inequality. And you are probably familiar with the equality, y equals x squared, right? So if you plot the graph of the function y equals x squared, so y equals x squared, you will see a parabola. So along the parabola, y exactly equal to x squared. So which means that above the parabola, y is bigger than x squared, right? So the domain of the, this function is essentially whatever is above the parabola, but we also need to exclude points where x equals 2, right? So let me choose another color, right? So um, basically, this is like 1 and this is 2. So the, this vertical line is the line x equals 2. Okay, so uh, it means that the domain of our function looks like whatever lies above the parabola except for the line x equals 2. So the line x equals 2 should be removed from it. Right, so essentially it is something like this. I mean, it is this part plus kind of the, this part. So the, these two parts and the, the, the line between them is, is cut off, cut away. Um, maybe I can sketch it in, in Desmos calculator. Um, I don't know. Let me erase this. Um, y equals bigger than or equal than x squared and x equals 2. Yeah, yes. So basically, this is what it looks like. So the, the red part is um, is the domain of the function. Right? So the, 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 the blue line here should be removed. OK, I hope this is clear. So now the next example. So here we have another function. Um, that we are supposed to find the domain of and to sketch the, the domain of. Um, now, so here we have this, again, so when you think of the domain of a function, you always need to figure out what kind of prevents it from being computable, right? And, and here we have the logarithm, and you know that the logarithm of anything is only defined uh, if the input of the logarithm is positive, right? So whatever uh, we feed into the logarithm should be positive. So, um, which means that 2x minus y minus 2 should be strictly positive. Okay. Uh, it is usually more convenient to work with, uh, you know, forms of equations and inequalities that are resolved for y. So I'm going to move y to, to the right-hand side, leaving 2x minus 2 on the left-hand side. So 2x minus 2. 2 is bigger than y. Um, probably it's better to switch the two sides of the inequality. So it means that y is less than 2x minus 2. Um, so, and that's basically it. So th this is the domain of the function. So this is the defining relation. So the domain of my function is the set of all possible combinations of x and y such that y is less than 2x minus 2. Well, um, if you want to compute g um, of 1, negative 2, it means that 1 is, is x and 
y is uh, negative 2. So x is 1 times logarithm 2 times 1 minus uh, y is negative 2 minus 2. All right, so 2 minus 2 cancels out. Minus and minus is plus. Uh, so this is 1 times something doesn't matter, so it's just logarithm 2. Okay, so now we've got to sketch the domain, and the domain here is y is less than uh, 2x minus 2. Um, okay, so this is the domain. So let me explain how we can sketch this. So again, let me plot some coordinate axes. So this is x, this is y. Uh, let me switch to another color. Now, uh, this is an inequality. So let us um, think of the corresponding equality. So what if I try to, 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 to plot the line y equals 2x minus 2, right? So we want to explore the inequality y is smaller. So let us look at the equality first. Um, okay, so if y equals to 2x minus 2, um, the slope of the line is 2, right? And the uh, y-intercept is negative 2, so the line goes like this, and with the slope of 2, so this is what it looks like. Okay, uh, so along this line, y is exactly equal to 2x minus 2, right? So above the line, y is bigger. Below the line, y is smaller. And our condition says that y is smaller, so which means that it is uh, whatever, so everything below the line. Right, so this is our domain. So everything that is below the line to it, y equals 2x minus 2. And well, if you're interested, you, you can sketch it in Desmos calculator. Y is less than 2x minus 2. Okay, how is this clear? Um, let's get on with the next example. Well, with a definition or a notion of a graph. So the graph of a two, two variable function. Well, it is it's just a surface in the 3D space, right? So, I mean, it is something like the graph of a 1D of a one variable function on the uh, a one variable function. Well, its graph is a curve and the graph of a function of two variables is going to be a surface on the 3D space. It is a bit challenging to sketch it on paper. I don't think it makes a lot of sense to do it, but if you are interested in uh, visualizing it, so you can just use Google just normal Google. So here, Desmos calculator is not going to help. Well, um, but you, you can just Google. So let, let, let me give you an example. Um, I don't know. So let me give you an example. Um, whatever, um, f of x, y. Let's say, um, let's say x square y plus y square. So what, what you do is, 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 is you standard this, z equals x squared times y plus y squared into Google. And it spits out your, your graph. It's basically as simple as that. And then you can rotate it and look at it from, from different uh, angles. All right. Uh, now, what are level curves of a function of two variables? So, level curves of a function of two variables are just um, curves on the plane. So, notice that the graph of a function of two variables, so the graph is essentially a surface, so it sits in, in the 3D space. And level curves, um, they're curves, so they, they sit in on, on the plane. So, it is probably somewhat easier to visualize level curves than, than, than a graph. Now, um, how can you sketch level curves? So for example, um, let, 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 let's say we're going to, um, to look at the same function. So f of x, y is um, x square y plus y square, right? So uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to write x square y plus y square should be equal to some constant. So say, for example, 1, right? So this is a level curve. So if you want another level curve, basically you've got to uh, 
put some other constant in, in into the right hand side so change one to zero so this is a different level curve now this is like i mean let's say right negative five so but that's yet another curve so negative five these are level curves of the given function so in desmos you can actually um, plot all of them kind of well with a slider so uh, let me show to you y square equals c right so this is and if you add a slider basically you're going to to see different level curves for different values of c you're going to see different level curves okay so this is what level curves look like in general now if you plot all level curves at the same time then what you get is the so-called contour map and if you uh, write the corresponding values on um, on the lines then you can kind of figure out what's what's going on here so whether um, the functions values are increasing rapidly or decreasing rapidly so I mean a contour map is really a very good uh, representation of a function of two variables uh, so here is some simple example um, so the our function d of x y is the distance from x y to the point negative one two so determine each of the following level sets so i am going to write write it down but before we do so let us just apply some common sense right so what is the set of all points whose distance to the given point is negative two right uh, is it possible that the distance is negative two of course not the, the distance cannot be negative so which means that uh, the this level set is, is going to be just empty so the empty set is denoted like um a, a cancelled circle something like this okay now let us look at b so if the distance from a given point to um to x y is zero what does it mean well it just mean i mean the, the zero distance only happens if the given point is exactly x y right so if um x is negative one and y is two so which means that in this case the domain is just one point negative one two and in the last case so what is the set of all possible points um whose distance from um whose distance to a given point is three so this is just by definition a circle and this is what we are going to see uh maybe if you want to write it in equations then you you can do it like this right so you can uh do it like this so square root of x plus one square plus y minus two squared is uh, negative two right so you immediately see that the left hand side is a square root and square root of anything is bigger than or equal to zero right so the input of the square root has to be non-negative but the output of the square root is also non-negative right and the right hand side is negative so which means that this is impossible right so the, this equation has no solutions so in this case we write that the domain is the empty set so in the second part x plus one squared plus y minus two squared is zero now it is possible to solve the, the, this equation to solve the, this equation we can square it and write that x plus one squared plus y minus two squared is zero now how can we solve an equation with uh, two unknowns so here we just need to think a little bit about it well the square of anything is non-negative right well at the same time we know that the sum of two squares is zero but the sum of two squares can be zero only if both of them are zeros because if either of them is non-zero, then the sum of two squares is going to be strictly positive. Well, if x plus one is zero, it means that x is negative one. And if y minus two is zero, it means that y is two, right? 
So it means that in this case, we necessarily conclude that x is negative 1 and y is 2. So the domain is just one point, negative 1, 2. And in the last part, square root of x plus 1 squared plus y minus 2 squared is 3. And th this is probably the easiest case because we square it and get the equation of a circle. x plus 1 squared plus y minus 2 squared is uh, 9. Th this is a circle. And we can, again, we can, if you want, we can plot it in Desmos calculator. Um, so x minus 1 squared plus uh, x plus 2 squared is 9. Oops. One. This is our circle. So if you change it to, z to, to zero, you only get one point. If you change it to negative, negative two, you, you get nothing. All right, um, next example. Um, so here we're going to find um, a level curve of the given function. So there are two parts. So first, the one that corresponds to um, to a certain value of c, right? So this is kind of, so here we're given the right-hand side and here we're given one point on um, on the level curve, okay? Now, um, so to find the level curve corresponding in, in part one to, to 75, what we do is we write our function 100 minus x square minus y square, it equals 75, right? Uh, so now I believe that the easiest thing to do is to move x and y uh, to the to the left hand side and 75 to the to the left hand side. So doing this, we get 100 minus 75 equals x squared plus y squared. Well, 100 minus 75 is 25, and maybe it is better. It is easier to rewrite it as x squared plus y squared equals 25, or x squared plus y squared is five squared or maybe just to be absolutely super clear and transparent x minus zero square plus y minus zero square equals five squared so this is the circle um, centered at zero zero and with radius five okay and this is um, how we can visualize it okay so now if we want to find the level curve which passes through the given point, right? So our function is 100 minus x square minus one square. Uh, now we don't know what the right hand side is. So we know that it is some C, right? So, but we do know that our level curve passes through the given point. So it means that if x is 10 and y is zero, then we're going to get the correct equation, right? So our equation is going to be satisfied if we substitute 10 for x and, and 0 for y. So 100 minus 10 squared minus 0 squared is c. Okay, um, so c is 100, 10 squared is 100, so c is just 0. So which means that our level curve is just f of x, y is 0, and um, we can rewrite 100 minus x square minus y square equals zero as x squared plus y squared equals 100, which is 10 squared. So what we get is a circle of radius 10 centered at the origin. All right, um, so that's basically it. So if we want to graph this function, again, so this is a picture from the textbook, but if you, if you want to graph it, so you can just do it in Google minus x square minus y square. Uh, 100, right? So this is what it looks like. And if you want level curves, you can plot in Desmos calculator. All right, so this is the end of the second part. Now please uh, pause and take this um, simple quiz.